Today is a big day for me. I'm going to repair the parking brake on my International 484 tractor. Other models are similar, like it doesn't have to be a 484, it can be a 584, 684, you know what I mean. Different models, and I'm sure there's many of them that, are, that have the same parking brake assembly. If you guys have tuned in just to know how to properly adjust this parking brake and you're not interested in watching me do these different repairs to this tractor, all you care about is how to adjust the parking brake, you need to fast forward to this point right here. And there you'll find how to adjust the parking brake properly. And I'll even include a picture of the case manual on, on how to do that. For the rest of you who are interested in my journey on repairing this 484 International tractor, I am the Kentucky Yankee, and we're gonna get started first by removing the parking brake assembly. Let me show it to you. So we'll just ease down here on the left side of the tractor. I've already removed the cover, this you know front cover here. And here's the parking brake assembly. Here's where we're gonna adjust it later, right there. And I'll show you how to do that, like I said, properly. And I gotta take this whole assembly out, guys. It's really difficult to videotape it, so, you know, it's a couple bolts. There's one here, one there, and you, you can access them from the outside of the fender here. The bolt heads and the nuts, like I said, are on the inside. Let me just get that whole assembly out where you guys can see it, and we'll go from there. Yeah, and the power just went out. I don't know if you guys noticed that, and I'm in the dark just all at once. Got it on tape, man. So here I am in the light by the window. I, I would say you could see me, but I need to go and do some investigation. I don't know if it's my place or every place or this garage or what. Here's the park and brake assembly removed out of, off of the tractor. And this side, guys, was like bolted to the fender, you know. So the bolts went through here, three of them, and I got them on backwards. The nuts were actually on the inside, if you ever do this. But those three are all that holds it. On the back, you have this switch which tells if the parking brake is on or off and we're going to check that on the inside right here this is where you adjust it right in there the cable comes up through there and is held on the back side with this little clip it uses this spacer goes over the cable and then there's two nuts one to adjust it and the other one will lock it down the issue I'm having with this thing is that it's not locking these teeth. You know, it won't lock into place. This is stuck, and the mechanism inside of there is stuck, so it won't release. The spring won't release and latch onto those ratchets. So I'm just going to pull this back all the way back like that. And the reason why is so I can get right in that spot right there. It's hard to see in there, but I need to get that moving back and forth so it'll lock onto those teeth on the ratchet. So I'm gonna do that right now. All freed up, but we're not done yet. It's not, this piece is not wanting to come back up, retract like it's supposed to. There's a spring under this right here, this plastic part. Um, I am afraid about cracking that plastic, but I have to get to that spring under there. It's weak where it's been rusted or something, you know. So I'll just take my chances. It's not moving. Oh! So a piece just broke down inside of it. I could tell when I twisted it. So I want you guys to see it the same time I do. Look at that mess. Rusted up pretty bad. And I broke that, I broke that little rod off there. So take it apart some more and get it fixed up. Have to remove this pin. This right here makes it ratchet up and down, makes it pivot on that pin. There's a ratchet piece in there. I'm gonna take it out so I can get the rest of the stuff out, see what's going on. And I've been trying to avoid this the whole time, but it's gonna have to happen. 
I'm going to have to get this off. The pin pushes through there, but it looks like, you know, it's secured on with this washer or whatever. It's not a really big deal. I just didn't want to do it. You know, we'll pop it off and we'll have to maybe weld it back or figure out a way to keep it back on there. So I can take this piece off right here by removing one of these, just one bolt here. I think it's best to get it out of the way. So there's a socket under there for this to fit around that. And we'll set her down there. I don't know if this will work or not. You guys can probably hear my air compressor running. We're gonna use this air hammer. Let's see if I can get that pin to go. It has a sleeve right here. So what's happening is it's rusted inside that sleeve. I'm gonna heat it up right there with a the torch and then get it the rest of the way out. She's glowing red. She's still wanting to be tough. Interesting. She's hot. And this come out like that. And now crap will come out of there. That's the piece we were looking for right there. That's what we're after. So that's what's on the inside there. And all it is is a, this is like a little paw, you know, with a, teeth in it to ratchet, to hold the ratchet. This is what broke. And a spring, you know, in that plastic piece. And that's made to unscrew, but you know, it's so rusted and this, this need to be fixed anyways. So what am I gonna do to replace this? All right, so I'm thinking that rod right there uh, will work for this project. I gotta get this door panel off, I'll get this off. My only concern is it might be too short, the rod, but I won't know until I get it off and get it out. So there it is. And see, it's still got the end on it, so if I needed it, I could use it. But I was able to save this old one by boiling it in water. I was able to unscrew it. The length is right. And it's, you know, it's even got the bend here on the end. Uh, right there, the bend is on it. But see, I got to straighten this thing up. And it's threaded on this end. But I think I'm going to straighten it up. And I probably got a tap that'll fit, fit it. And I'll tap it. So there it is. And I thread it on the end. Just like the old one. For those of you that don't know, this is a tap. You know, for a tap and die. It's, you can interchange these. And it, and it makes threads. So here we go. This paw fits on there just like this onto this rod. Then we're gonna slip it up through this tube. Sorry for all the noise guys, it's raining pretty hard outside. Next thing, to line that hole up and stick your pin in there. I'm putting it in through the bottom because the paint's rubbed and I can tell the washer was on top. Then your cotter pin. All this is done inside. There's your little paw, see, going in and out. I'm actuating it. The next piece that's going to go on is this piece right here, this bracket. And it goes on just like this. And then, and then you will uh, stick the pin through, you know, this back side. You'll put the pin through here and then drive it in. You know, I'll go over there 
you'll stick a socket right here on this side, flip it over, and hammer your pin in. Now if you get confused how this bracket goes, like I did the first time, what you can do is after you put it in here just like this, now take this piece and where it's supposed to bolt up like that, then if you look, this flap, this flap right here, we'll see, it'll hit your switch, to the on and off switch. That's how you'll know you got it, that's how you know, you know, if you want to make sure that you got your bracket on the right, go everything going the right way for you. Also, also, before you, when you drive that pin in, make sure it's about middle ways in the ratchet deal. I just, I think that helps so that the claw doesn't get stuck on either end. The next thing you're going to do is, is I'm going to put a washer over the top of this and weld it on. So the last step, it's still hot. And if you want to criticize my weld job, you can. I don't have my welder hooked up yet, so I had to do it old school and it kind of bubbled. I don't know, whatever. Anyways, a washer goes on here first. I don't have the exact spring, and I could always change this out later easy enough, but I got one close, and I think it'll work fine. Spring's next. Another washer, uh-oh. another washer and then we'll thread this end on here make sure you push down as you thread it because it'll strip that little cheap plastic so here we go need to bolt this bracket back on but before we do that I'm going to show you how to test this switch so to test this switch is pretty easy this switch is either open or closed you know so you put these two you set your own meters your own meter to ohm and I always put it where it makes a big beeping noise so if the circuits closed see that's the reading you'll get and it's beeping I don't know if you can hear it, but it's, you know beep so open no beep close beep so it should do that, one position or the other. So just hook one lead on each side. And right now, you can't hear it, but it's beeping. So that means it's a closed circuit right now. If I squeeze it together, it should stop beeping. And there you go. See, that's infinity, I think. So that's an open right now. Let it go, it should close. And it's beeping and it's closed. What that means is there's no resistance and uh, there's no resistance in that switch or very little. So it's making a loop there. It's making a loop. Push this in. You've just opened that loop. Push it in. You've opened the loop. Let it go. Close the loop. Open the loop. Close the loop. So this switch is working. So here we go. It's not going to be easy, guys, to get in here and show you, but I'm going to do it. Right there, that's the end of the cable. What goes over that cable right there, the first thing is this round spacer. Just so you know what you're dealing with. Then it has two nuts on it, on top of this spacer. One to adjust it, and one to lock it down. The reason for that slot is just to hold it with a screwdriver so that you can get the nuts off if they're froze up. You need to, you really should spray them down with oil a few days ahead. What we're gonna do is put this spacer on there first. Now I'll put one of the nuts on. Your emergency brake, your emergency brake has to be all the way down released. Um, I can't. So, so there you go. Now what you want to do is put your first adjusting nut on there and snug it down until you feel resistance. Uh, when you feel a little bit of resistance on there, 
then you've gone far enough and then we'll check it. Guys, I'm really sorry about this rain. It's so loud. I hope it doesn't sound that bad on camera anyways. Uh, after you feel just a little bit of resistance, and I mean when you just start feeling it to get tight, stop. How do we know now that it's, that it's adjusted right? Your brake should only go up four clicks. That's it. You should hear it go. Four clicks up. Click, 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 click. So I'm going to check it right now. If I have four clicks, it's adjusted right. If not, I'll either have to loosen it or tighten the cable. One or the other. Well that's awesome guys, it worked out just great. And there's no camera trickery here or anything like that. I really did just tighten that first nut down until I felt just the slightest bit of resistance. Then I ran around, hopped on the tractor and checked it. And sure enough, it went four clicks, which is cool. I'm actually surprised myself. Anyways, that's how it's supposed to be. Now take your other nut and uh, put a wrench on the nut that's already there. Take your other nut and tighten it up against that first nut. That'll, that'll lock it in place. Guys, I'm gonna go back and spray a little paint on there so don't worry about it rusting or anything like that. I'm not that particular, I just don't want that to rust. As promised, I'm gonna put a picture of the inside of the manual on how to do this parking brake adjustment. Uh, so you'll be able to study that if you want to. You can pause it, read it, whatever you gotta do, guys. Listen, thanks for coming along and watching this video. I had so much fun doing this. I, I, I just love old tractors and working on it. We'll see you next time, guys. Please, please forgive me for all the rain noise. It's so loud in here. I hope it didn't transfer onto the video that bad.